Hello, welcome to Blah Blah Lara. I'm Rodrigo Lara, and I'll be your host for this episode. This is a podcast about life changing, especially changing countries. We will interview people who uh, immigrated from one country to another, and they changed their lives completely. And today, our special guest from Malaysia to Canada, Tisha Raj. She's one of my best friends. I actually, I met her in Argentina uh, when we went to Lollapalooza. It was really funny. And then she visited me in LA. And now you're here. Hello, Tish. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for you know, partaking in this podcast. It really helps. It, it's like a, very good to have you. I want to pronounce it with blah, blah, Lara. Blah, blah, Lara. Yes. <laughs> That's the name <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, can, can you tell me wh when did you move to Canada and why? Um, so I moved to Canada in 2008. Um, I was about to turn 25 years old. Um, I moved with my parents to Edmonton, Alberta, um, specifically. Uh, why? Very good question. So uh, my <laughs> uncle, he has been in Canada for more over, like close to now, I think almost like 40 years. Um, he was interested in the immigration process of sponsoring families over because a lot of Asian uh. families in Edmonton was doing it and he would see different families uh, sponsoring grandparents, uncles, aunts. And because my family unit, uh, it's only my parents and myself, we were small. I had completed university and college. He's like, you can continue here to do whatever I wanted. Um, so he decided to sponsor my parents and I. My parents wanted to move solely because of me because they found it will be mm -hmm. a good opportunity for me to expand not only career-wise but also studies if I decided to pursue my studies and generally it would be a different environment like a safer environment um yeah and they just wanted to be uh away from some of the politics that was happening in Malaysia Okay, so yeah, okay. That's, that's I understand. Uh, wow, uh, I thought it was longer that you lived in Canada. I thought you grew up in Canada, actually, because because you you have a very good English. I don't notice your accent. It's like uh, I thought you have been there longer. Two thousand eight. It's not so long. Oh, nice, nice. No. And, uh, <laughs> and but tell me when uh, when you moved to Canada, what were your main difficulties initially? Did you face any? cultural shock, for example, or do, do you still have something that you notice that you, you think, uh, oh, this is, in Malaysia, it's not like this, or uh, I'm not used to this, I don't understand this, uh, this custom here? Yeah. I'm just going to quickly revert back to the English. So in Malaysia, English is taught as a second language in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and Malaysia was what's a former British colony. So that's why English, I grew up with English as a first language in my home. Ah, uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. do you, do you, uh, were you educated in English in Malaysia? Like you learn how to read in English? Ah, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I should I should have known that before. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> that's totally fine. Um, oh, yeah. Fine. So my yeah. So one of my main difficulties when I first moved was, I think the socialization aspect of things. Um, I did not have any friends here. And moving as an adult is much more difficult as opposed to moving when you're a teenager or when you're a younger child, simply because, you know, if you're a teenager or a child, you still have high school school, you can make friends more easily. But as an adult, like you have to find different avenues yes. on how to make friends. Uh, so for the first part, for the most part, for the first year, I was closely bonded I would say like my close friends were the people I was working with and also um the people who I went to church with like I would say those were my two main friends um that was a challenge I didn't have any friends outside I had to uh keep myself busy by doing a lot of volunteer work 
um, mm -hmm. just to expose myself more to the Canadian culture, uh, to understand the people here as well. Um, another difficulty I found was because Malaysia is similar to Brazil in a sense of the lifestyle, um, we mm -hmm. open <laughs> uh, late. So our, I would say like our restaurants, our pubs and bars, you know, they go on to like <laughs> three, four, five in the morning. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's something I found very okay. difficult. Like things here in Edmonton get quiet, like by seven in the evening, um, especially yeah. during the winter, like six in the evening gets quiet. So that was something I had to adjust to. Um, uh, so they yeah, have like and closing then I, time. Oh, sorry, sorry. To interrupt. They have their closing time. Like in the United States, like 2 a.m., they turn on the lights and okay, it's closing time, get out, go home. <laughs> Was, yeah, was, that's the bars yeah. here too. So 2 a.m. is like, okay, like done. You're like, <laughs> but I just started <laughs> my night. <laughs> so, uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that was one of the things. And then I think um, here, like growing up, I did know about some of the indigenous uh, history in Canada, but not as extensive. I knew some mm -hmm. indigenous history, Canada and Australia, but and even in the United States but not as extensive. So when I came here, I was exposed to more of it. Um, so things, I learned more things about the realities of things like residential schools, what um, are some of the indigenous, like activists, um, indigenous activists here who are still fighting for uh, rights to clean drinking water. Uh, many of the indigenous communities in Canada are unfortunately still under uh, water boil advisories. Um, wow. even right up till today, like 2021, you would think mm -hmm. everyone would have clean water, right? But no. So yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms, yeah, very similar to Brazil, like now as I'm reading up more on things globally. Um, so those are some of the things that I was a little bit shocked to find about. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did moving to another country helped you to develop as, as a person? What did you learn or what did you improve for yourself? Did you open your mind for different cultures or I don't know? What can you yeah, um, so I would say personally, like personal growth. I, because I grew up as an only child, I was very, I would say very sheltered from a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there were certain things generally just as a female uh, growing up in Malaysia, you just wouldn't do, like you wouldn't go out by yourself at 10 at night. Mm -hmm. like just, mm -hmm. you know, trying to go to the local corner store to like buy bread, like you just wouldn't. Um, it wasn't advisable. But whereas here, I think I grew up to be more independent. My parents, especially my mother, um, she was more comfortable. She was comfortable with me, like, you know, taking the bus back home at like mm -hmm. one in the morning. She wouldn't have to worry, like those kind of things. So yes. I grew more independent. Um, I also developed, like I had always loved uh, traveling as a young child, mm -hmm. but the opportunities were limited in Malaysia. But when I came to Canada and I found out, um, and when I started working and saving up, like opportunities to travel, to uh, learn about other cultures, to understand more about the world. Um, that was something I also learned along the way, which was great. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things that helped me develop as a person. Um, I also found like the activist side of me, I would say like I mm -hmm. speak up more about different um, social issues, especially when it comes to issues about gender, about race, about mm -hmm. immigration. Um, mm -hmm. What would, like, I think a term that most people might be comfortable or familiarize themselves with is being an intersectional feminist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so those are some of the things I grew more comfortable or educated myself, learned more about things um, and I could speak more eloquently about them. Nice, that's great. Wow, you had a, a good upgrade there. Yeah, very nice, very good for you. And another question here, but what is one thing that you miss from Malaysia or what, what is one thing for example, that you don't like in, in Canada? What can you say about that? Um, honestly, 
can't just okay the mm -hmm. first thing i honestly miss about malaysia would be um the food yeah <laughs> uh -huh. um yeah. yeah i grew up on <laughs> food like even though mm -hmm. i still have my mom like i'm super grateful for her but like there's uh yeah food like from back home like street food my aunt's cookings um those are the things uh -huh. i miss and I think generally, in general, I just miss um, about being able to just go outside and not have to worry about the weather because it's either <laughs> super sunny, super hot, like Brazil, or it just like uh, rains, like no tomorrow <laughs> again in Brazil. So yeah, <laughs> those two exactly. weathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have to worry about the snow. I don't have to worry about ice um, and such like that. So and then I think, yeah, I would say like my extended family. I do miss my extended family a lot. So um I oftentimes video call or like message them every other day and so on. Yeah, those are some of the things I missed. Um, what is the one thing, the best thing I like about Canada or dislike about Canada? Yeah, one thing that you, you don't like, whatever you feel more comfortable answering. You can say something that you <laughs> like most or something that you don't like. Oh, yeah, so I well, it's almost been, I want to say, Oh my gosh, I hope I did my math right. I think almost 14 years now that I've been living in Edmonton. Um, wow. We are known for our harsh winters, <laughs> brutal winters, uh -huh. where it can get up to like easily, like on average, it can get up easily to like minus 25. Oh my God, um, I wouldn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> yeah so even though i know how to dress up well and bundle up well i i just don't i don't like winter winter is not my, my yeah. least favorite um mm -hmm. that's the one thing there are some pretty days when it's like you mm -hmm. know minus 10 and it's snowing that's that's a good level i can deal with that but anything colder just that's miserable <laughs> for me personally okay all right and um Another question here, what are your plans for the future? Um, what are you expecting? Do you plan to stay in Canada, go back to Malaysia, go to another <laughs> country? What are your plans for long term, you know, short term? Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so hard. <laughs> um, my plans for the future, well, I do plan up to take some short courses um, in relation to what I'm interested in, like um career wise and also personally wise um so career wise like i'm interested into looking into more like human resource courses um that just helps me with my current work at the moment mm -hmm. um and then personal interest would be like yeah more courses university courses to learn more um have a more diverse knowledge on like gender race uh, environmentalism those are some of the things those like are little future plans um i'm because I still have my parents with me. So at the moment, they're the mindset of where Tisha is going, they will be there. Mm -hmm. um, so for now, we're pretty much settled in, in Canada. So I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also dependent, you know, if I do end up meeting someone here, most likely, yes, then I'll stay here. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving, I don't see myself moving out of the country, but potentially maybe if it's time and if it's um fitting then i may foresee myself moving to another province within canada okay but that's all up in the air like it's mm -hmm. really depends on what i'm doing yeah so mm -hmm. okay. nice and now a final question a bonus question um more of a curiosity <laughs> i feel like this is an exam now <laughs> <laughs> what how many countries have you traveled for? I know that you like to travel and I always see on your social media that you are always in a different place with like su super cool pictures. Uh, do you have this count <laughs> or what is your favorite country to travel? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Okay, or wait. Your next so, destination? Brazil. Brazil is your next destination. I know. Brazil, <laughs> well, after the vaccine, yeah, like okay. after I get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, so how many, okay, wait. So I have, Okay, let me count properly. I have Australia, um, Cuba, Mexico, Argentina, uh, Netherlands, Amsterdam, the US, <laughs> where I feel like I'm missing, Argentina, 
Um, I'm not going to count Spain. Like, I think you went to Spain too, right? Spain. I did guess Spain? I did go to Spain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, I did go to Spain as well. Yeah, I did go to Spain. Um, right, and then actually Spanish. last <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then last year, before COVID, I was actually planning um, to travel a bit in Central America. That was like my goal. Mm -hmm. But of course, COVID kind of like pushed that aside. So I was like, okay. Um, yeah, I I have traveled to Singapore, but I'm not counting that in because Singapore is right next door to uh, Malaysia. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, no, that's like, yeah, anywhere within Southeast Asia, I wouldn't really count as travel. It's and yeah, have you to Indonesia too? Content. Indonesia? I have a cousin. I never did get a chance to go to Indonesia, um, but that's like um, on my bucket list because Indonesia has some really cool, like cool spots to visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I want to go there. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. that was it. That was it for, for this episode. Thank you so much for your participation. I really appreciate that. It was really good to have you on the first episode of Blah Blah Lara. And see you soon. <laughs> okay, see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. This was the first episode in the first season of Blah Blah Lara. Stay tuned for next episodes. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>